All right, well, welcome back to the Sports Max Zone. We continue our Olympic build up on your home of champions as we inch ever so closer to the greatest show on earth. Every Wednesday until the games, the Sports Max Zone will be highlighting notable athletes that you might want to keep an eye on in the city of love come this summer. Here's Kimani O'Sullivan with our Wednesday feature, Paris Wants to Watch. This is Paris Wants to Watch. Seven men have won Olympic medals in the 100 meters and six in the 200 meters for Great Britain. And 28 year old Zarnell Hughes is hoping to add his name to the illustrious list. As his country of birth, Anguilla, was not a nation recognized by the International Olympic Committee, Hughes turned to Great Britain to fulfill his dream of competing at the Olympics. In confirming his decision in 2015, Hughes said, I have always known that if I was to run at the Olympics, it would be in a British vest. And that is how I have always dreamt it to be. He had to wait six years for his first taste of the Olympics. But after crisply negotiating his semi-final with a 9.98 clocking, the Jamaican-based speedster fall started in the Tokyo 2020 final. But the lessons of that heartbreak were well learned and he got his crowning moment two years later when he copped bronze at the 2023 World Athletics Championships in Budapest, Hungary. While Olympic years can be daunting for athletes, Hughes, who has already shown steely resolve, is confident he has the temperament for the occasion. Well, uh, I'm not pressured by anything. Uh, last season, I, I did the same thing going into the season. I just tried to stay relaxed, keep a clear mind, not to put any pressure on yourself, and just enjoy the sport. And that's where my head is at this year. Um, for me, I'm try just trying my best to stay as healthy as I possibly can and um, ensuring I, I rest properly, eat properly, do all my proper recoveries in regards to my massage service and you know ice baths and stuff like that. So um, I'm happy with how things are going and I'm, I'm very excited to take on this season. Alan Wells, Linford Christie, Darren Campbell, Great Britain's most recent Olympic 100 and 200 medalists. Now, Zarnell Hughes is hoping to leave his own indelible mark on the Olympic stage. That's all we have for today for Paris Wants to Watch. More to come as we chart our course for the City of Love. All right, so Lance, of course, Paris wants to watch. I'm looking forward to see those features week after week. Today, um, you know, one of the focus would have been on Zanel Hughes. Uh, what do you think about him coming into this season? Want well, a little, a little worried because he pulled out of the European Championship this week because of a bit of a niggle. So let's hope it isn't serious and that he'll be in good shape because he's world class and uh, coming out of the Glenn Mills Racers camp um, has shown significant improvement in recent years. And as we saw with his bronze medal finished at the Budapest World Championship, he's definitely a contender. Um, let's just hope that he will be fit enough. And it's interesting that he just said that. He, he, he said just now that he wants to ensure that he remains injury-free, uh, does his um, recovery issues and eating properly and so on. And here it is, um, weeks before the Olympic Games, he has a bit of a niggle that forces him to miss the European Championships, which a lot of the top athletes in that continent have been using to fine-tune their, their, their preparation for, for Paris. So I hope he'll be well because he is a medal contender for sure. Yeah, and great to see someone from Anguilla, this tiny island in the, in the Eastern Caribbean, producing athletes at this level. Yeah, and what I like is the fact that, you know, he says he's not going to be pressured by anything. He's just going to take it day by day and, of course, approach it. And I think with that mindset, we can see special things from him once he stays fit, of course, because that's the one thing no athlete can control, that injury issue. And every time I interview one and I have to ask about it, I always cringe because it's such an un uncomfortable question. You know, your imagine Lance, your entire season is just dependent on whether you get injured or how bad your injury is. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, it's worse when you get uh, injured in an Olympic year because, you know, you have to wait four years for Olympic Games and a lot of these athletes are in the, in the prime of their athletic careers. And uh, there's no guarantee that for Los Angeles 2028, a lot of them will be as good as they are now. So my heart goes out to these athletes who suffer injuries at these 
critical times. Right now, I haven't been able to play football for about three weeks because of a quad injury I have, and it's killing me. I and, know, I'm, and I'm no I, professional athlete. Do you know? I'm just an amateur athlete who plays football for fun, and it is depressing. Do you know that was going to be my next <laughs> comment, right? I was actually going to share with the viewers that, you know, you are still blessed that, you know, you come to a daily job, so you have other things to occupy your time. But I'm comparing that now to an athlete too. Of course, this is um, a part of their daily routine where they train for this sport and then they're unable to do that. Mm. To me, I feel as if, and you're so miserable when you can't play football, I should <laughs> tell the viewers, because he says it from the moment he gets to the office, he would say, my girl, you know, I can't play football, this injury, or even when you go to the doctor and you come back and you find out that I'm going to be out for a couple of weeks. So think about <laughs> these athletes, Lance, that, you know, they can't do what they love so much mm -hmm. and they don't have a job like this to come to to yeah. keep them occupied mentally. it really is painful and even though they can't compete they still have to train and do rehab exercises because when you're on the recovery mode you still go to the gym and do specific exercises yeah. to strengthen the areas that need strengthening so it's not as if in many instances they're just sitting down idly they still have to go through processes whether it is a rest phase or a rehab phase that often includes exercises, re-strengthening and uh, recovering. Um, but, you know, when you can't compete, it is devastating for these athletes. And, and you are right. I'm, I'm not a professional athlete and it, it hurts me mentally when I can't play. And I'm just saying that you are correct, that for these athletes who are professionals and who live to compete, it, it really is a mental strain on them when they go through these injury issues, as I said, especially in an Olympic year, Yulemar Rojas, the outstanding triple jumper from Venezuela, misses the Olympics because of an injury, an Achilles injury, I think she has. And, uh, you know, <laughs> the, the gold medal was there waiting for her in Paris. She is the number one in the world. And um, she has waited, well, I was about to say four years, but it would have been three years because the last Olympics would have been in 2021, delayed because of the, the COVID-19 um, the COVID nineteen issues that, that delayed the Games. But... You know, she's she's the only athlete who is missing the Olympic Games because of an injury. I just pointed her out because she's undisputed number one in her event and uh, almost sure to win the gold medal. And now she can't compete. She'll have to look to Los Angeles 2028. And right here in Jamaica, we are so uneasy and looking um, for the medical reports, trying to find out yeah. if our very own Elaine Thompson here or what's the extent of her injury because, of course, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I want to see Elaine come Paris 2024. I'm praying and hoping that, of course, her injury is something that can be healed before the Olympics because I know she has given so many of us, especially um, the younger people. Let's just talk about the kids that would have watched the Olympics when Elaine did the double-double, right? Not to be able to see her in Paris um, this year would really be a miss, Lance. And I'm just, you know, you talk about injuries and I'm just still sitting here day by day looking for that update because I just want to hear that she's in the clear and we're going to see her compete. Yeah, and we haven't heard much since her weekend um, issue. She did say she will get professional advice as to what happens from, from now on. But the first major assignment for her would be the Jamaica Nationals, which come up later in the month. And she would have to get through that to make the, the team anyway. Yes. And if she isn't at her best and she can't compete properly, um, she would probably not make the team. So we're hoping that the medical report that we get on Elaine Thompson-Hira doesn't rule her out of the championship. And even beyond that, um, she would be in good enough shape to, to, to do well at the championship to get, to get on the team, first of all. But at the moment, it has to be very worrying to her fans because what we have seen so far from her this season hasn't been encouraging. Yeah, injury always, always a very uncomfortable situation. Well, if you want more in-depth Olympic coverage, We've got you covered every Wednesday with Le Bouton, which premieres at 6 p.m. Jamaica time, 7 ECT on Sportsmax and 7 p.m. Jamaica time, 8 p.m. ECT on Sportsmax 2. Here's a preview of what you can expect from tonight's episode. It's nothing to do with him. It is to do with competing. It's to do with transparency. It's to do with everyone having fair and equal opportunity and that's not what has happened all right so that clip there just a piece of what ebony drysdale 
had to say Lance about what she's going through in the sport of judo. We spoke about it uh, briefly yesterday on the Sports Max Zone. We've still been trying to reach the authorities that mm. can give us some sort of response and also give us their view on what's happening. Yeah, history-making competitor in judo for Jamaica back at the Tokyo Olympics, a Commonwealth Games silver medalist, and at the moment is uh, off the roster, we are told, for uh, the judo representation for Jamaica, and she, she isn't pleased. And um, I guess that story still has a conclusion because um, we haven't heard finalized teams yet for the Olympic Games, and she's actually fighting for a spot on the team. So we, we'll see how that story unfolds. All right, that means it's time for a quick commercial break. We'll be back.